I'm Pastor George Borkart, and this is another Higher Things video short. What your pastor thinks when he's preaching the law to you. That's the subject of today's Higher Things video short. Like, subscribe, ring the bell, get the app, share, donate. If you love what we're doing in Higher Things, pass it on the faith to the next generation. Like our videos, subscribe to our YouTube channel, ring the bell for notifications. Get our app. It's available on all major platforms. Sharing is caring when it comes to Higher Things content and donate. A tax-deductible gift to Higher Things keeps us passing on that faith to the next generation. And we need this gospel in these dark times. So you're sitting there in the pew and your pastor is railing with the law. He is telling you about what you have and haven't done. He is telling you, it's like he has cameras in your house and he knows that you've been naughty, not nice. You know, it's, it, he's blasting you. Maybe you think he's talking specifically about you and you start to get grumpy. Well, dare him talk about me. Well, we started this last week with close communion. I want to do this this week with, 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 um, what your pastor's thinking when he preaches the law to you. Now, your pastor has been tasked, called by God to preach two messages to you, the law and the gospel, the law to show you your sin, the law which requires you to do and change or die, the law which is meant to kill you. It will kill so that the gospel may raise you from the dead. And so when the, 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 the pastor's preaching second use law to you, which is the mirror, he might be thinking a couple of things. Um, your pastor might be like a doctor who's thinking to himself what you need most. Um, what I mean by that is, is he has diagnosed something that the word of God has, it, it, either the word of God is diagnosing it in the text or your pastor has seen something in the congregation that he, that he, that he feels it necessary to address. And he's doing this in a, it's, and it's not personal. This business. No, it, and, and he's, and he's, and he's, he's, he's diagnosing a problem. He's cleaning a wound. Okay. And so it, it, it is purely medicinal that he's using the law here. He's not out to get you. He's not broadcasting your stuff. He isn't having ax to grind. He's not at the grinder and, and he's not sharpening the blade. What he's doing is he's trying to, he's trying to, to deliver this word of God that God is trying to deliver to you. Um, he is the instrument in which God is delivering this word of God to you. There it is. Uh, and, and, the, and he's tactically dropping the thermonuclear weapons, smart bombs, that will pulverize your, your heart, your cold heart, so that the gospel can be poured in. He might be thinking that. He might be thinking that. Um, he also might be thinking, and this is something that I'm very familiar with. Your pastor also might be thinking this. Make it stop. Please, God, make it stop. Just make it stop. And what I mean by that is, your pastor is delivering the Lord's words to you. You are hearing God speak. He who hears you hears me. He's not God. He's in Jesus. He knows he's not. Um, but he is speaking this word of God to you. And not only is it that word coming out to you, but it's also coming out to your pastor. And he's at ground zero for it. And so he's saying the words and the words are meant for you, but God is working on him too. And this happens to me all the time where I'm, I'm, I'm preaching the law to my parishioners and I'm thinking, I'm going to go to hell. I'm leveling them for things I do. I need to be rescued from this sermon. And he with you is being worked on. 
and God is pulverizing his heart. And he is petrified that while he's run the race, that he'll be excluded by this law that he's preaching, which makes him a hypocrite. Yeah, your pastor thinks he's a hypocrite all the time. Your pastor doesn't need unbelievers to tell him he's a hypocrite. Your pastor knows he's a hypocrite. He knows his sins, but all the more, he knows his Savior. Luther once said of somebody who said that um, he was a bad person, Luther looked at the guy and said, look, they need to give you a, do a, a doctor doctorate in theology because you know the dung pile stinks. All right, you can smell poop and it smells bad. And there's no person worse in your congregation than your pastor. And what I mean by that is that's why he wears black. Because not only does he know the word of God, and he knows how he should and shouldn't live, he also knows that he's going to be judged more harshly. And that scares him. And so you can bet that your pastor is trying to get to the gospel. He's trying to get to the gospel so that for his sake and for your sake, and when your pastor gives you the third use of the law, when he tells you how to live, he's not trying to make you a better person. Um, that's not what's really going on. That's not the end-all, be-all of your pastor's preaching. The end-all, be-all of your pastor's preaching is to deliver Christ to you. He wants to preach Christ and him crucified. That's why he was called. And he knows that he will stand before God on the last day and God will tell him, did you forgive their sins? Did you comfort them in the gospel? Or did you talk about what you thought you should have talked about instead of what I wanted you to talk about? And so the end-all be-all of your pastor's sermons isn't the third use of the law. He's not trying to tell you how to be a better person. He's telling you how to love your neighbor. He's trying to tell you how, again, just as he did in the second use, how you can drown that old Adam, not for the sake of the gospel, to hear that gospel, that word, but also so that you might turn around and love those around you because they could really use you being a better person. So again, the end all be all of your pastor sermons is not to blast you with the law. That's not what he's up to. That is not what he's up to. You may think that that's what he's up to. You may that want him to be that you may want him to, to do that, but that's not what he's up to. He's not there to change your behavior. Only he is there to give you the gospel, to give you the forgiveness of sins to give you the mercy and grace of God. Your pastor is happiest when he's preaching the gospel. Your pastor is happiest when he's given you the mercy and grace of God. And do you know why that's true? Do you know how I know that's true? Not because I'm happiest when I'm preaching the gospel. It's because God's happiest when God's preaching the gospel. Your pastor, like the, God, the Lord who sent him, preaches the law in order to kill you because he has to. In order that he might preach the gospel. In order that he might preach the gospel to you. And one last thing, one thing for certain, your pastor is not preaching to someone else. He is not preaching to the people next to you. He is not preaching to the, the, those who never do anything in the church, who just sit around. And if they were as good as you, then they would be involved in all the projects that you're involved in. And they would be as good of a member as you are. That's not what he's up to. Your pastor is speaking specifically to you. He wants you to repent. Let's change that. God wants you to repent. God wants you to turn from your sins. God wants you to stop doing the stuff that you're doing that God hates. And he wants you to, to, to turn from all of that so that you might hear the saving power of the one who became the things that God hates for you on the cross to save you. because this is all about saving you. Your pastor didn't come become a pastor in order to, to tell you how bad of a person you are or make you a better person. Your pastor became a pastor because God called him to say, your sins are forgiven you. And to do that, he's going to have to tell you that you have sins. And then afterwards, he's going to have to instruct you on how to love your neighbor. But this is all about Christ saving you. That is why your pastor is there to give you the forgiveness of sins achieved by Jesus on the cross and delivered in the external word of the gospel. And if you want to put in the comments, well, the word of God does that, not pastor. I totally agree with you. This is the word of God, but your pastor is the tool, the instrument, the Latin is instrumentum secundum. Um, 
And if you think you don't need a passer, if you think that you don't need um, uh, some external voice from God, well, you got to take that up with Jesus because he's the one that sent your pastor there to chase you around with the law and the gospel in order to save you, in order that Christ may save you. I'm Pastor George Borkart, and this has been another Higher Things video short.